Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In the previous shuttle related video, Eric Popcorn asked about Shuttle C and what I thought about it. And in general, when it comes to old ideas that didn't actually happen, I, I'm not that interested in them because I have my own ideas. But they are the launching point for my own ideas. You know, if I know about Shuttle C, I might get inspiration for something else, as I have done here. But let's discuss Shuttle C first. What we have here is actually a full ship. Shuttle C is just a cargo shuttle. So it's taking the space shuttle and making a cargo version without any crew is the goal of it. And there are many ways of doing that, but there's one huge obstacle when it comes to doing that. The huge obstacle is the fact that the shuttle is designed such that the thrust of the shuttle's main engines goes through the inner tank here on the external tank. It is not being applied to the bottom of the tank. And the important part about that is, is that that allows this huge hydrogen tank here to be very light because it's just hanging off of the stack. It doesn't have to bear that thrust. And so it's basically bearing 1G uh, with some sloshing and some side forces and stuff like that. Uh, but it's not having to deal with the thrust of the shuttle's main engines. That's actually going through diagonally up into there. And that allows the external tank to be much lighter than, say, the first stage of the Space Launch System SLS. Uh, so when you make a shuttle C, you can't just have the engines applying the thrust to the bottom and then have a big fairing on top. You have to actually have a structure that goes from the engines all the way up into the inner tank. And if you have that structure that transfers the thrust to the inner tank, then you are going to either be dumping that, and so that's not reusable, and then you just try to retrieve the engine section, or you're going to expend all of it, which is a waste, but and, and not in keeping with the principles of the shuttle program, but you know, uh, and they are very expensive engines. Uh, at the time, they were about $40 million a piece, and nowadays they're a little bit more, they're trying to get back down to that price, but may or may not get a chance to do that. Uh, renovating the engines, in other words, once they were recovered and they needed to be refurbished, uh, the refurbishment cost in 2011 when the shuttle program ended was $25 million for all three engines. So you talk about $8 million a piece. So that's $8 million a piece versus $40 million for a new one. Okay, so if you're wondering about how that worked out, that's how it works out. And so it's definitely beneficial to bring them back. So you can bring them back as a separate section, you can just dump them, or you could build a full shuttle and just have a cargo shuttle that doesn't have the crew uh, portion, doesn't have the extra OMS fuel for all the special maneuvers that the crew version has to do because it's trying to rendezvous with something, deploy into special orbits or stuff like that. And you don't need the big wing because you you don't need the cross range stuff because of the fancy missions DOD needs the crewed shuttle to do, which isn't necessary for just a straight cargo shuttle. The cargo can maneuver itself into whatever orbit it needs. So you can have smaller wings. They will need to be moved anyway because the center of mass location will be different when you have a the cockpit removed which is very heavy, of course, and also the OMS. Actually, if you remove the cockpit and reduce the OMS, but then still coming back down, usually the OMS is mostly depleted anyway. So yeah, you're changing the center of mass and you need to move the wings up a bit, uh, make them a little bit more trapezoidal instead of a delta wing. But yes, so you can reduce all that mass and then you get more cargo capacity and you're not risking crew and you could do that and have a reusable cargo shuttle and make it full. Uh, but yeah, the whole mounting point idea does make turning this into a cargo launch vehicle, pure cargo launch vehicle, a hassle. Uh, it would be much easier if we had an Energia or Energia style thing where the engines are at the bottom and the payload just ends up on top or even on the side like Polyus or something like that. It 
that arrangement was always meant to be a standalone launcher. Uh, it's not integrated the way the shuttle is to the stack. And really, Baran is just sort of a limpet hanging off the side. Anyway, so that, that's, that's the whole Shuttle C thing. Let's talk about something else that's even more interesting that didn't happen. <laughs> and that's, that's the idea I came up with. So here we are. So with that in mind, I thought about it and went, well, instead of reusing it, like bringing it back down, why don't we just reuse it and have a ship? Turn the external tank into ship. Now this has precedence. Uh, there is Kim Stanley Robinson's Red Mars series where they actually took like a hundred external tanks to make a huge, gigantic Mars colonization ship. Uh, that's going a bit far. Uh, but Kerbal would grind to a halt. But we can do this. And this has the structure that transfers the thrust from the shuttle main engines all the way up there. We have the trusses. We have tubes. The tubes are actually functional because they carry the radiators because I want to replace eventually the RS-25s with nuclear engines. And, you know, there's a possibility that if they're small enough we could just carry them up as it is and have the Kerbals fit them. Of course the reactors wouldn't be running at the time. Uh, and then we could have another shuttle come about and uh, grab these and bring them back down. So we'll just take those off. Uh, that's easier said than done, I know. But uh, it would take quite a little bit of engineering, but this is an ambitious ship. And it's not a simple thing. And if you're going to talk about something that didn't happen, you might as well go ambitious with it. Uh, why even bother try to make it reasonable and within budget when we already know it's not going to happen? So anyway, this is going to be tremendously expensive, as usual. Uh, I do have here a load of avgas here to represent the stuff that will be necessary to refurbish it, turning, in, turning it into a ship, including the MLI layers. So that's about 60 tons of avgas. And we're going to have to put MLI layers on the hydrogen tanks. Uh, the foam is not sufficient. We might have to clear foam off even. Might have to put the MLI layers also. The MLI la layers are very light though. Uh, on the oxygen tanks, but actually, we since it's going to be an NTR is the baseline idea, we just need the hydrogen tanks and then we'll fill those up. And there are multiple ways of doing that. Uh, we might replace the crew portion up here with just another hydrogen tank. So up front here, we just have a hydrogen tank as a refueler. That ain't coming back, but if we've got some way, let's say on the moon to get, well, or preferably asteroids to get hydrogen and then, then a hydrogen tanker that goes over to the moon and grabs hydrogen would be nice. But anyway, that's long-term thinking. But then since the hydrogen tanks are the only fuel tanks we need for the NTR, the oxygen tanks then become part of the crew habitat capacity, which is why we have docking ports here. And so the crew just goes through into there as well and uses that area. Uh, just a reminder, this HAB is set up so that this is actually an escape pod. Uh, it has thrusters here. It would need parachutes. I haven't fit the parachutes, but yeah, it is meant to be an escape pod. So on launch, they'll all be in there. We, oh yeah, I'll, I'll rearrange staging in a sec. So anyway, I should probably just launch this. We'll retract the radiators, I'll rearrange staging, and we'll see this launch for the heck of it. But there are endless ideas we can have. Uh, there, there were sort of related ideas that uh, I think there was a Jupiter series that sort of tried to use the external tanks and boosters in wicked ways. Um, so that those I, I forget there was probably one that was sort of similar to this setup with uh, dual external tanks and boosters. All right, well, there's a bit of a gloomy cloud layer above us, but we're going to go ahead and go for it. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. And off we go. Launch thrust weight ratio is not that much different from a normal shuttle launch. 
Oh, uh, we're wobbling a bit. Uh, you know what? I had an auto strutted. Let me do that. Uh, let's just say the root part. These can be the heaviest part. Okay, that seems to have done it. Roll, I guess roll zero will be fine. Not the smoothest. So to launch, I guess I should throttle down. We pass the speed of sound there. This is 4,000 tons on the pad, so still lighter than super heavy. Being ready for booster set. Booster set. Oh, a little bit weird, but okay. These are still wiggly. I'll do some more auto strutting, but I don't know if it'll help. Oh, why don't we roll over? Uh-oh. I've allowed too much time to wap waps this there. Throttle down, throttle down. Let me shut off most of these engines. Keep this under control here. Now it's not wiggling so much. Oh, just a mod review. The engines and the external tanks are from the Space Shuttle mod by Giulio Dondi, or, you know, modified by Giulio Dondi. The front end, those are all my parts. This is a procedural tank with uh, texture. And uh, these, the two parts are my parts, the radiators and girders are stock. Um, that part and that part are lackluster labs. There's a procedural tank here. And then that's it. And then my own RCS thrusters in the back. Well, not the most efficient launch ever. Okay, we are in orbit. With some to spare. Not that these can use it, they only have one ignition. Uh, right now, this is 279 tons in orbit, but of course we're carrying the tanks. We, I mean, it is part of the payload right now and that is one of the complications with the space shuttle right because the space shuttle is part the stage and part the payload and so it's a little bit hard to separate those two but yeah uh well they're there and they should be about 26 tons each maybe up to 30 tons depending on the version of the external tank so you could take that it's still more than 200 tons on the center portion so that's quite a lot I think you could make a decent ship out of that and then of course we're going to be using the oxygen tanks in order to expand the crew area though we'll definitely have to purge the oxygen so we'll have to carry some extra nitrogen to get you know pump that in there and of course we have to just let the oxygen vent a lot otherwise it'd be dangerous for them to go in there and uh, yeah so things can happen the, the hydrogen tanks even though the hydrogen hydrogen tanks are physically large um, the amount that they need to be refueled is not that much i think they're a little over 100 tons of propellant a piece so um, basically one launch of if, if down the center we just had a huge hydrogen tank uh, we could probably carry it up with the same setup so that could refuel them. The rendezvousing would be a pain in the rear end with such heavy vehicles, but that's a possibility. Boy, they're all tilted all over the place. Stop that. All right. Well, anyway, that's this ship, and but it's not its final form because technically we need to have the nuclear engines on board. We could extend the radiators just for looks. Oh, it needs solar panels as well. Right now we don't have any power generation except for fuel cell. Of course, it's got plenty of hydrogen and oxygen to run the fuel cell on. So there is actually, we can also open the nose. There's an opening nose. And it does have solar panels here, but that's not going to be enough for everything. And it has a docking port there. So if you're wondering where it docks, that's where it docks. Uh, though the tanks there 
to make it inconvenient. But that has RCS ports and little thrusters there. Should have more thrusters in the back, really, as OMS engines. It's sort of like a limpet thing when we've got the eight flaps like that. It doesn't look quite as good. So if you'll forgive me, I'll, I'm just going to close this up right now because it looks better like this uh, with it closed up. So anyway, but it has that capability. So there you have it. That is that is an idea, and I'm, I'm not short of, of ideas, let me assure you. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.